Hello, everybody. Happy New Year. Welcome back to Traeger Live. I'm Amanda Haas, and believe it or not, this is our 60th episode of Traeger Kitchen Live. I'm so excited to be kicking it off for us here in 2022, and I'm making my favorite kind of food for us today. People ask me all the time, what do I like to cook on my Traeger? And my answer is always, everything. So today I'm going to be making a complete meal for you that's so great for this time of year. It is a Moroccan spiced chicken with roasted root vegetables and a charmoula sauce, which is out of this world. Then we are going to do a flourless chocolate cake, which I know it's kind of everyone's thinking about what they're eating this time of year. I promise you it's so simple. It's better for you than many desserts. It's got lots of dark chocolate in it. And then I'm going to take my cranberry apple tequila punch and turn it into something where you can use alcohols still or you can make an alcohol-free version that is absolutely delicious. So if you don't know me, I am a Traeger Pro Team member, which I'm so proud to be, and a three-time cookbook author. I am the founder of Amanda Haas Cooks, and this is just my favorite thing to do in the whole wide world, is to cook with all of you. So cooking live is so much fun too, because I will be answering all of your cooking questions live today. So Thanks to Austin on the social media team at Traeger, and thanks to my dear friend Sunny, who always fields the questions for me right here from my own backyard. I'll be answering for them for you throughout the chat, okay? I'm gonna get cooking, but before I start, I just wanted to share with you all that I'm cooking everything on my Ironwood 885 today. This is my total workhorse that I love so much. And I think that some of these recipes call for hickory, some call for apple pellets. I use a lot of them interchangeably, but I just loved the hickory with this chicken recipe. So you can make it your own, absolutely. But I just wanted to share with you which ones I'm using today, okay? So let's get started because we've got a lot to cook within the next 50 minutes to an hour. So I'm gonna start with the chicken legs and I'll show you, I bought them just like this at the market, you know, where the uh, drumstick and the thigh are still together. It makes for kind of a nice presentation if you're entertaining people. I think it's just like to give everybody one piece like that. But if you want to just cook skinless, boneless, skinless pieces on your own, you can. If you want to do something without the skin, they'll cook much faster. I also love doing bone-in chicken thighs or chicken breasts. So it's really about making it your own. And I'll show you today that when you're using uh, an instant read thermometer to get the temperature right on these, you'll learn that it's not so much about the time as making sure that the internal temperature of the meat is correct. And I can't wait to show you the meter that I've been using a ton. Okay, so for the spice blend, I have drawn loosely on some Moroccan spices that I love so much. And one of the things I love is that this time of year, we're really focusing on our health, like I mentioned. And over at Amanda Haas Cooks on Instagram, I'm doing 30 days, 30 ways to feel your best this year, just by making some small changes in your, in your lifestyle. And one of them that I always talk about is using turmeric as a spice along with black pepper. Uh, it actually is a really huge anti inflammatory ingredient but you have to have black pepper with it if you want the turmeric to be available to your body to digest in fact it makes it 2,000 more times bioavailable to your body which I think is just crazy right so I've got turmeric and cinnamon and cardamom and cumin and a few cloves black pepper and kosher salt for this typically I would do this with a little olive oil and you can put do these um, your chicken pieces the night before or even four hours in advance and let them sit in the fridge in the spice rub and you'll get tons of flavor. Obviously for the sake of uh, magical television or video today, I'm not doing those for quite as long, but they're still gonna be delicious. Okay, so my spice rub's awesome because you make enough to be able to use on root vegetables or save it for another time too, okay? So I'm just put this on here and I'm gonna go straight ahead and get these on the grill to get them cooking at 400. Sunny, any questions so far? Am I just cooking away and people are soaking up the new year? It's so fun to be the first one back doing this. Soaking up the new year. Soaking up the new year. No one's got questions yet. We've got a... My question is, will my entire family like this meal? <laughs> Sunny's throwing me a question that I know the answer to. She's being kind. She said, will my entire family like this meal? I know the answer is yes, because this week I put this recipe up on my 30 days, 30 ways recipe challenge for people to make, and she already made it and they loved it, which I'm thrilled about. <laughs> so thanks for throwing me an easy one, Sonny. 
Um, well, I like the whole leg when I can, but I also made chicken thighs for us in advance. People ask me what I prefer. So if I'm in a hurry or, you know, it's, I think it's easier to find pieces that have already been cut into smaller pieces if you're buying quickly from the market. But I think that the legs are really pretty for presentation if you're entertaining and if you have big eaters in your house, you know? Uh, they're asking what pellets I'm using. I'm using hickory for the chicken today, and I used apple or cherry you can use for the dessert and the cocktail for the oranges as well. Um, those are all delicious options, okay? I wanted to show you as well that I put these on the top rack because the beauty of this recipe is that I'm going to roast the vegetables underneath the chicken so the juices drop down and you capture all of that amazing juice right there in the vegetables. It's like if you've ever seen rotisserie chicken and they cook something underneath it like onions and potatoes and there's just so much extra flavor. So I thought it would be fun to take advantage of the size of the Traeger to do that. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I can't believe this. I can't, I can't go on without telling you about it. It's the meter probe and my fingers are yellow from all the turmeric I used. But this, if you haven't seen it yet, is a new partner of Traeger's. Uh, I'm so excited that we're working with Meter now, or that they're part of the Traeger family, I should say. And this is a thermometer that fits directly into the meat and can stay on the grill, okay? So it's wireless and it connects to this and then an app on your phone. And from the phone, you can set what kind of meat you're cooking and if you like it well done or medium rare, <laughs> if it's the case for chicken, of course, we want it to be done done. So all I need to do is put this into the chicken and I'll, I'll sneak it in right now. Typically, I would do it right here on the counter beforehand so you're not opening and closing the grill to do it, okay? Yeah, we have another question. Do you put the spices under the skin? Ooh, somebody asked if I put the spices under the skin. Let me put this meter thermometer in my chicken and I'll answer the question. You wanna make sure you don't have it near the bone, okay? So I'm gonna slide it in the same direction as the bone. And there's a little line on it where you know you need to insert it all the way so that you get an accurate read on this. But I'm telling you, this is a total game changer. If you are new to cooking meat, or if you just want to know that every time you're going to get it to the temperature that you want. The first time I used it, I made a boneless, skinless chicken breast, and it was the most delicious chicken breast I've ever had in my life. It was crazy. So... Sunny, to answer the question, do I put the spices under the skin? You certainly could, but if I'm letting them sit in the fridge for four hours or up to overnight, I think it does plenty of work on its own. And plus, underneath on the bottom side, there's no skin, so you get all of that flavor there, too. Um, you brine the chicken, and I use avocado. Oh, I love these questions. Somebody asked if I brined the chicken. I did not brine the chicken for this. This is kind of like a quick weeknight recipe for me, but you certainly could. I'm going to get rid of these tongs because they were near the chicken. And I used olive oil, but I also love using avocado oil. It's got a high smoke point and it's got great health uh, qualities for you. You can also use ghee, which works really well too. So I'm so glad you asked that question or somebody asked that question. Also, the thing I like is, you know, this time of year I mentioned, I think this whole idea of new year, new you is kind of crazy because I, I, I think when we tell people you can't have anything or you have to change everything about yourself and your diet or your lifestyle, that it kind of sets us up for failure, right? So I really want to talk to people about things that you can, uh, small changes you can make in your diet or in your lifestyle to help you move the needle and hopefully make them permanent in your life, right? So. I like to cook recipes that are still full of so much flavor that you don't even realize they're that good for you, right? And learning how to use these spices and cooking everything on your Traeger adds so much flavor that you'll just be shocked. Yeah, another question. What temps are you cooking at? I am cooking at 400 for the chicken and the veggies. The dessert is going to go on at 325 and by the magic of <laughs> magic <laughs> I happen to make one in advance as well we're gonna split the difference on here while I make these but yeah 400 I love for this chicken recipe it crisps the skin really nicely and you get that nice crispy color on the vegetables as well so don't mind my turmeric the yellow of course will get all over you but if you're using gloves you won't have to worry about that okay I think we have another question no we're good Sunny huh 
I love that Sunny followed along with my plan. I think I put out seven dis different recipes this week um, to teach people how to make basic things like green sauces, like the termulo we're gonna make, which can really add such a health punch to your uh, diet, but they're so delicious. But she cooked everything ahead. So on Monday night, she made this whole recipe and her family gave it rave reviews. So she was out with me <laughs> and, and they were eating our meals. So let's talk about these veggies that I put together here. I already peeled and diced them so we could save some time today, but I love root vegetables. And this time of year, they're really easy to find. So whether it's parsnips or rutabaga, which I did a little bit of today, I've got rainbow carrots in here. And then I also used an orange sweet potato and a purple potato. Isn't that gorgeous? I don't know if you can see that on either of these cameras. But when the, I just wanna make sure that I'm dicing them all the same size, right? So that they're gonna cook evenly. So if they're in bigger pieces, of course, it's going to take longer for those to cook. And because I want these to be finished at around the same time as the chicken in a perfect world, I diced them pretty small. So again, I did all of this yesterday and I'm a huge fan of being able to cook ahead so that when it's actually time for dinner, you're not rushing around. Actually, I'm gonna quote <laughs> Kristen Andrus, Jeremy Andrus's wife, the CEO of Traeger. She's an amazing cook and they obviously Traeger all the time. And she has a big family and she said, the worst time to cook dinner is when it's time to eat dinner. And it's stuck with me and it's absolutely true. When everybody's hungry and they're staring at you wondering what you're gonna have, <laughs> it's just the worst. So I love to make recipes where I can prep ahead like this um, or even cook them fully ahead and you're ready to go. So. Um, you can see I took a little bit of that spice blend I already made while we were chatting and I cut up a red onion and I just peeled it and I cut it into uh, quarters. I put two of them on here, tossed it with some olive oil and that spice rub and I'm going to put them directly under the chicken pieces, okay? I think they've got enough oil. You just need enough to coat. And you could certainly do this in a bowl if you wanted to make sure it was perfectly coated, but I'm anti-dishwashing. <laughs> and so I'm doing them directly on the sheet pan I'm going to use. And I also put a piece of parchment paper down because that makes your baking sheet easier to clean. So if you happen to have one, I highly encourage you to use it. They work well up to about 400, 415 degrees. Otherwise they kind of crinkle up and disappear. So on it goes. You can see I'm just gonna go right there. Ta-da, isn't that fabulous? So easy and make sure that it's hot enough. If you have um, an ironwood or timberline or any of the grills from the past few years, I'm just so blown away by how quickly they recover in temperature when you open them. You know, a lot of times people wonder why their food takes longer to cook than what the recipe calls for. And that's usually if you're opening and closing your grill a lot, or even if you're cooking in an oven and you keep opening and closing it because heat can escape like 50 to 100 degrees every time you open that. So I'm really conscious that I move quickly when I'm taking things off the grill, or if I wanna check the temperature on something, I'll take it off, close the lid and check it and then put it back on, right? So it helps a ton and it'll speed it up. Yeah. Back to the killer thermometer. Back to the killer thermometer. The meter, I believe, is it available for sale at Traeger uh, on Traeger's website, meter, M-E-A-T-E-R.com. I'm pretty sure you can buy it on their website too, but we're um, one big happy family now. So I'm pretty sure you can get it at Traeger.com as well. And pardon me? Oh, it was Sunny's question. <laughs> She's testing me today. Oh, this girl, I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, but it is, it will absolutely change the way you cook. And Sunny, I have to say, for someone who, when she's constantly cooking the same things at her house or trying things I'm recommending, and she's down the street and we have the same grill, and I'm telling her, oh, cook it to this temperature or try that, it's an absolute game changer. You need to try it yourself, actually. I'm sending you home with one. Oh, you did? She did try it with me, and we thought it was amazing. You're right. You're right. Okay. Oh my gosh, I love this. Somebody said they'd like to use Raw's Al Hanout, El Hanout spice rub uh, instead of the homemade sp spice rub I made. Absolutely, you can substitute rubs. And I love that they said that because 
it's whatever you like, right? And I love all these warm spices together. And obviously we have some amazing Traeger rubs available. You could even do the chicken rub or something like that. I just, I just wanted to show people how to use some of these warmer spices like cinnamon and cloves and other things too in their cooking or turmeric. Maybe we should bring this one to life for Traeger. But that's a great suggestion. Raz El Hanout. You could even use a curry spice blend if you prefer, whatever you like. Is there another question before? Sunny's also my assistant, and I'm going to have her go in and get things for our chocolate dessert to make next. So any questions before I send you on your first errand? Okay, we're good. Could I do this with fish? Ooh, you could do it with, with fish, but you know what I would do? I would just lightly brush it with the spices and the olive oil at the end when you're cooking it. So you could marinate it on there for maybe like 20 or 30 minutes, but you wouldn't have to for very long. But it would be delicious with like a thick white fish or salmon or on shrimp, oh, so good. You could even do it with a pork chop. It would be delicious with pork, so. Okay, I'm gonna move on to our chocolate cake. We're gonna work in a really fun order right now to pull off this whole meal, okay? So let me get the ingredients for that. And forgive me for coming and going. Okay, I'm gonna get everything we need for this incredible recipe. Before you go to cake. Before I go to cake. Oh, can I make this with the whole chicken? As a matter of fact, you sure can. Oh, the chocolate is perfect. Uh, you can make this recipe with the whole chicken. In fact, I think in my last cookbook, I did do it with a whole chicken. I did a more complicated version of this recipe. I did um, cauliflower rice under it instead of couscous. So it's kind of a fun riff on a healthier version of a roasted whole chicken with the charmoula and the spices and um, the cauliflower cauliflower rice. It was delicious. But for Traeger, I loved the idea of these root vegetables. So just put the chicken on the top shelf and let those veggies, let it soak into the veggies on the bottom. You could absolutely do that with a whole chicken or spatchcock it and it would be amazing. It'd be so good. Okay, moving on to our amazing chocolate dessert. We'll come back to the chicken, of course, and the veggies and everything else that we're going to do with it. So if you didn't get a chance to ask about that, trust me, we're not done with that either. I'm just gonna get everything else out that I need for this super easy recipe. Are you gonna make dessert on a trigger? <laughs> Is that a real question, Sunny? Sunny, <laughs> Sunny, I love that she's using this time for her questions. She's prompting me, which I truly appreciate. She said, you can make dessert on a Traeger? She knows that I make everything on my Traeger. Uh, Sunny is also my dearest friend who we had our kids on the same day in the same hospital, a total fluke. And of course, we're attached forever because of that. And they're now 18, but we spend every holiday together. So she's being sarcastic when she asks me these questions because she knows that I do everything on my Traeger. Okay, Sunny. So... Here's what we did, because I'm cooking everything on one grill today. I usually love to do that. I melt the chocolate and the butter together on my grill. So this is just some, um, I took guitared chocolate chips. I took dark chocolate chips and I melted them in a saucepan with three quarters of a cup of butter, unsalted, okay? So it'll melt faster if that butter's softened a little bit. You just wanna make sure to do this over low heat so that you aren't burning the chocolate, right? Like a lot of people will have you do that in a double boiler, but I just do it straight in the saucepan and I put it right on my Traeger, 300, 325. Just put the lid down and check on it every couple of minutes and give it a stir until it's smooth and beautiful like this, okay? So I've got that. One thing I just said is that you always want to make sure that you put a little bit of salt in your desserts. So I'm still going to do that for you. I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla directly to this chocolate mixture. You guys, I get so excited about this dessert. It's so good. And I was so excited to show it to you today because I think cakes seem intimidating and people think, what, what are you doing? I mean, there's no flour in this recipe, right? You're just taking in the benefits of the dark chocolate, eggs, I use high quality cane sugar that's organic actually, a little bit of vanilla and the butter and you're in business. I mean, it's amazing. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna crack these eggs into this bowl. This is kind of a fun challenge because normally baking recipes say in the bowl of an electric mixer, whisk the eggs and add the sugar. Guess what? I'm gonna whisk them by hand just to show you. You don't have to have every fancy tool to make an awesome dessert. Sunny, have you had this recipe of mine? Yep. You have? <laughs> it's 
she, I felt bad last night. She called. She's like, what are you making? And I said, I'm making everything for tomorrow. And, but I didn't have anything ready. Normally I could send you with food, but Yes, you can take some chocolate cake home, and as you should, you deserve it after helping me so much. Do you clean the grill racks after every cook? Oh, I love that question. Um, I probably have yellow on my face now because I feel like something got on it. Do I clean the grill racks after every cook? It depends on what I cook. A lot of times I'm cooking on baking sheets, right? So I don't, I don't clean it if I've just used a baking sheet. But if I'm cooking chicken or meat or anything directly on the rack, what I like to do is heat it up first, Sunny, and then I just give it a quick brush when it's hot and it just cleans anything right off. If you've cooked something with a lot of fat on it, like a brisket or you've done pork shoulder or anything like that, you wanna make sure that your drip tray is clean as well or that you've taken one out and replaced it or put fresh foil on your grill and that you've cleaned the rack well because we don't want any smoke from that grease coming up for your next cook, right? That'll affect the flavor. How's everything looking over here? It's perfect, okay. Why should you put salt in dessert? I love that you asked. I Sometimes I forget as a cook uh, to explain to people why I do things because it seems normal to me now. But salt actually brings out the flavor in everything. So if you're doing brownies or anything with vanilla, it makes, it intensifies those actual flavors that you're cooking. So I'm actually gonna put my salt right there in the chocolate. And it'll just make everything taste better, which is amazing. Just like regular foods, you know, you could be a great cook and understand cooking techniques and how to cook vegetables and all of those things. But if you don't know how to season your food, it can taste so bland. And you're wondering, what is it that I'm missing? Usually it's just knowing how to use a little bit of salt, okay? First, I'm just gonna break up these egg yolks. And then we're gonna whisk like crazy. And you can laugh at me. I'm gonna add my sugar. And what I'm trying to do is get this until it's light and airy. Here we go. Let's see if I have any muscles. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good workout this way, that's for sure. I alternate between grabbing my whisk like this and then switching like this. It's just however it's comfortable in your hand, right? I could also use one of those old fashioned little egg beaters. Yes, question. I feel like Sunny's setting me up today because it's the do's and don'ts of cooking on your Traeger. Also known as Traeger 101, which Chad Ward and I have taught a couple times on here. Sunny's asking, can you use wet pellets or what are you supposed to do if you have wet pellets? Guess what folks, pellets need to be stored in a dry place because when they're exposed to water or a lot of humidity, they'll like shrivel up and turn to sawdust, right? So they don't work if that happens. Sunny's asking because on Thanksgiving, was it Sunny? She called me and said, my, my, gr my grill is broken. <laughs> it's not working. And I said, I don't believe you. And I basically went to her house shop backed the whole grill, took all the pellets out, which were basically sawdust, put the ones, put new ones in. And her mother-in-law was watching me saying, what are you doing? And I said, just hold on, nothing's broken. I put fresh pellets in, turned on the grill and guess what? Thanksgiving was saved. So it is really important. It's a common mistake. It's a common mistake. Friends ask me all the time, but um, yes, you need to make sure that your pellets are stored. We have these great um, rectangular containers now that are perfect for storing them. We have round bins too at Traeger.com. Uh, and you keep them out of moisture areas, high moisture areas, and up off the ground if any water can get in there, okay? Should you use a wire brush or a wooden brush to clean? I love this. This is like, let's get back into this in January, friends. I like the wooden scraper if you've got a lot of meat or things on your grill, they're like bigger chunks of things that you need to get off. But I just use a wire brush typically, you know, when the grill is warm to just um, scrub it really quickly. Excuse me, I'm gonna get another towel for my hands. And I have a bin of warm water here since I was working with the chicken, which I didn't really touch, but you always, of course, if you're working with poultry, wanna make sure, or any raw meat for that matter, that you're cleaning your hands well. The only ones eating these are myself, my children, and Sunny. So <laughs> if anything happens, she knows where to find the chef. Okay, I think this looks really good. What we're looking for is, I'll show you. The sugar needs to be well dissolved in with the eggs, right? Ooh la la. We're beating air into it. 
since there is no leavener, there's no flour, the air in this is what's gonna help this rise actually and give it a little bit of, of fluff. So now all I'm gonna do is take this gorgeous chocolate and I'm gonna start to pour it in with the eggs. If this were really hot, you'd have to worry about the eggs curdling a little bit, so you'd do a little bit at a time. But this is, I should taste it just in case. Mm, it's delicious, it's perfect. If there is such a thing, oh my gosh, you guys, this chocolate's amazing. In all seriousness, talking about, uh, you know, wellness in January, it is a super hot topic and you can't go anywhere, read the news, turn on the news without hearing about ideas for new year, new you, or looking at healthy recipes and people are on cleanses and detoxes and all of these things. But if you want to follow along for some really fun ideas that are just truly, like I said, maybe better for you than what you typically do, please join me at Amanda Haas Cooks. I'm posting all my ideas on Instagram and every day I cook live for you. I do one recipe a day. Obviously, this is more than one recipe and I um, was saving them up for to my favorite ones for today. But then every week I post seven new recipes along with a shopping list for you. So if you want to learn and follow along, you can, okay? I actually want to use my, I would typically just use my spatula in this that I just got rid of, but this will work. It's, oh, Sunny, we are so lucky. We're lucky to be outside in January. We're lucky to live down the street from each other because this is what <laughs> this is basically our family that we've had since COVID and her her kids and my kids have been able to hang out the whole time. But it's so fun to be able to share meals together so often. And it just I love cooking for other people and this is this is so much fun when I get to share it with you, Sunny. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you one other little trick even though I already um you can spray, if you're using a springform pan, like a nine inch springform, or I just used a nine inch round cake pan for this last night, you can spray it with nonstick spray and then coat it with some cocoa powder. The cocoa powder actually, it's like if you were to add flour on the outside of it, it helps the mixture climb up the sides and stick to it, right? Because if you're trying to get something to rise and it's slippery on the sides, it just kind of falls inward, right? So if you're doing a souffle or something like that, they always have you butter and flour. When you're working with chocolate, a lot of times it's cocoa powder because you don't see it as much, right? It doesn't show up or look strange when you, when you invert the cake. Now these, I'm pretty sure we're gonna eat straight out of these darling containers, but if you wanted to flip them out, you could do this. That sounds funny, flip them out. <laughs> if you wanna flip out, you could coat them with this cocoa powder and then invert them onto, uh, onto a plate and it's kind of just like a fancier way to enjoy the dessert, right? Is there any particular, you're not using those two things? Yes. Springform pan? Yeah. Can you use a springform pan, are you saying? Um, and what, like, what kind for the trigger? Oh, okay, so here's another thing when people are like, do you really do that on your trigger? Guys, if you put it in your oven at a certain temperature, you can put it on your trigger. So I put springform pans, um, any of my metal bake sheets, my roasting sheets, I put them all on my Traeger. So treat it like an oven. If there's something you wouldn't put in your oven, like something with a plastic handle, don't put it on your Traeger, right? So you don't have to follow any particular rules for this. It all is the same. So I love that about it as well. And yeah, these are adorable because they're, I mean, come on, they're just so cute. It's like they were born to go on the trigger. But if you just wanted to do a baking pan or a springform pan, that's fine as well, okay? Aren't they? <laughs> I should photograph all of this when we're done. We usually eat it so fast, <laughs> I don't get any good pictures. You guys are going to see I'm going to use a little ice cream scoop just to help control where I'm putting the, the batter. I'm overflowing, actually, but... I want these about two thirds full, okay. I set my little hedgehog timer over there, but I forgot I have a clock there so I can see, check and see how long these have been. The chicken's been cooking on the cooktop. Um, so if you hear something start buzzing, it's just my little hedgehog timer to remind me. Oh, these are gonna be so good, Sunny. I know. Uh, is anybody cooking? Is, I know most of the country is not in a place where it's like easy to go outside and use your Traeger, but I know how many of you love your Traegers year round and I want to hear what you're all making this time of year. 
when we do the Traeger um, private table classes. So often there are people from Minnesota or <laughs> the Northeast who are just cooking it up in freezing temperatures or our Canadian friends. I love hearing what you're making. Sunny is asking for herself, how would the flavor of the pellets affect a chocolate cake or a dessert like this? The way that I could describe it, Sunny, is that you just, it's not as if, first of all, you're not getting like that wood smoky flavor as much as it's just kind of like giving it a light note, right? So you might get a little bit, you could probably tell, oh, it's a little bit of fruit, right? Like you've got this woody fruit flavor that I love. But for a dessert, that makes me want to stay away from something like mesquite or hickory because I don't want all of my desserts tasting more like smoky, heavier woods, right? So any cookies, any brownies, I usually alternate between cherry and apple. People who like to mix and match more, you could certainly do something heavier like a mesquite if you wanted to do like a dark chocolate and then serve it with like whiskey or something. That could be really fun, right? Can I discuss how easy it is to change out the pellets? I would love to. I think I just got chocolate on my shirt. <laughs> I love this audience. That's not you asking that question. Let me put these on first, okay? And take a look at everything. I'm gonna put them up here. Now keep in mind, we're doing a little bit of pretend in that I would cook these at 325 and my grill is at, we're gonna split the difference right now, okay? So I just put it at 360. <laughs> Actually, we're just gonna kind of meet in the middle since I'm doing the chicken and the veggies. How were the veggies? Oh yeah, they look beautiful. So like I mentioned, I've already got some of these cooked off, so we'll be able to, uh, we'll be able to eat them and try them too. Hi, my son Charlie just got here. Can I brag about you, Charlie, and tell everybody what happened today? Sure. My son Charlie just turned 16 last week, you guys, and he got his driver's license. So he's my younger son, and what am I, I mean, they don't need me anymore. It's crazy. So now I'm just going to be doing this all the time. So why don't I get the ingredients to make the cocktail? And we'll have some fun with that. And Sunny already knows she's going to go get my secret ingredient out of the kitchen. So let me just get the ingredients together. And if you want to think up some more questions, I'll be right back. Okay, let's get everything we need. First of all, gorgeous. And then... This is such a fun recipe. This, I think, has kind of become my claim to fame in the cocktail area at Traeger. Okay, but like I said, I'm going to do a different riff on it today for us. Thanks, Sunny. Actually, let's use those. Okay, so this is a cranberry apple cocktail I love to make. And like I mentioned, I usually serve it like a punch. So you can take, I, I usually have like a big salad bowl. I don't even have a punch bowl actually. And I'll make an ice ring out of a bundt cake pan and put it in there. And then you just add all of the liquids to it. And as the ice ring melts, it just continues to chill it. And it's so easy, right? So today I'm gonna do a smaller batch. And like I mentioned, I'm gonna do a non-alcoholic version for us today. But if you're following along for the recipe, uh, on Traeger.com, what you'll find is that it calls for sparkling wine, tequila, and Grand Marnier. So it's boozy. <laughs> it's a fabulous cocktail, batch cocktail to make for a holiday party or a big group. Today, I am alcohol free right now. And I'm certainly going to be talking about alcohol at the end of my 30 days that I'm doing with everybody at Amanda Haas Cooks. Uh, I'm talking about 21 Seeds Tequila, which is a beautiful company. Uh, the founders are here in San Francisco, female founded, and they're working on tequilas where they infuse them with things like cucumber and jalapeno, hibiscus and orange. And so they are naturally low calorie and you don't have to be adding a lot of sugar to them, right? So, so often when people are like, why, you know, I drink alcohol or I just can't seem to feel better or lose any weight. I don't think many of us are taking into consideration how much sugar can be in alcohol sometimes. So it's definitely a topic I want to explore with everybody. I today am just really enjoying not having alcohol in my life for a little while because I feel pretty amazing without it and I'm sleeping so well. So instead of doing a big ring, I took equal parts of cranberry juice and apple cider, but instead of doing cranberry cocktail, which is loaded with sugar and typically has apple or pear juice in it too, I bought straight cranberry juice. 
which is super tart <laughs> if you're not used to it. I absolutely love it. So less sugar, less sweet. You can certainly adjust this as you like, right? So I froze them to make big ice cubes and little ice cubes. I'm just in love with how cute they are. So I'm gonna pop one of these in each glass. Let's do one with the big ones and let's do one with the little ones, okay? This is my new obsession, ice cubes. I am cooking for the dessert, you're at 325. For the chicken, you're at 400. We're pretending we're at both of those temperatures right now, okay? Just go with me on that. All right, Sunny, I'm making you one as well. Thank you. So yeah, I've got big ones, I've got little ones. And I'm gonna pop a few of the smaller ones into my pitcher that I'm using, okay? Just to chill it. Yeah, right? Um, I think Sunny was in charge of cocktails this year. You were. I was. So that's why I didn't do anything fun. Oh yeah, she's cute. She did ice cubes with raspberry and mint. If her daughter's watching, she'll probably do this for us next holiday because she loves doing fun things like this. Okay, so that's my little secret weapon. Do you know why else I love to freeze fruit juices and other juices as ice cubes? Because your drink won't get diluted as you chill it, right? So if you add ice and you had a beautiful tasting cocktail and it starts to dilute, you get rid of all of that great flavor. So this only intensifies the flavors you like, right? Okay, let's get these out of the way. And I'm going to blend my first batch. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the turmeric off of my my hands, but I think it's a lost cause. Okay, let's move this up to the counter so you guys can see how gorgeous it is when it comes together. All right, I've got my oranges that I smoked on the grill. I let them stay on for a while today, actually, so uh, I'm going to just squeeze these directly into here. Are you taking pictures, Sunny? <laughs> I see the phone straight up. I'm like, either she can't see, which is happening to both of us, or she's taking a picture of me right now. I don't know what she's doing with it. Maybe I should be concerned. The other thing you can do is slice oranges and put them into your glass. It's a beautiful garnish just to take an orange slice. I believe that's how it's shown on the website and it's just really, really pretty. Okay, so I want all of this delicious flavor. Ooh, they smell amazing. Okay, we're going to take those oranges. It's going to really brighten it, that fresh citrus. Okay, and now I want to add a little bit of my apple juice. Apple cider is what I'm using, actually. A little more intense. Oh, ha, ha, ha. Now, depending on the season, you know, you can freeze all kinds of things in these ice cubes. So you could do pomegranate seeds this time of year, in the summer, or when you can readily get berries, you could freeze some berries in them. You could also put them directly into the punch and it would be beautiful. Same goes for mint or any other herbs you like. I'm just gonna stir this aggressively. Yes, we have a question. I've heard about smoking water to make smoking ice cubes. Have you tried that? Who's this question coming from? I wanna know who's asking about smoking water because I talked about it one time because I became obsessed with it once I realized you could do it. So someone said, share with me how you can smoke water to make ice cubes for cocktails. You can, you take a sheet of water, like take a baking sheet of water and you put it on the smoke setting. You can even put it on super smoke and let it sit on there for like 30 to 45 minutes and soak in the smoke and then pour it into an ice cube tray. And guess what? You get smoky ice cubes. So if you are a whiskey drinker, I don't know my dark alcohol liquors very well. Scotch, I don't know where you would use, Scotch on the rocks, you would do that. You could definitely add some smoke to it, which is such a cool idea, right? Okay, so let's see what we think of this, Sunny. I'm gonna add my extra things. First of all, I need to taste a little sip. So let's just see. Mm, it's delicious. It's tart, which I like, like I mentioned. So you could certainly add anything else to sweeten it. But then I got this sparkling yuzu juice that I mentioned, which is another citrus, which is common in Japan, if I've got this right. Um, a lot of chefs use it, yuzu, and I love it. But this is pretty easy to find, this Camino yuzu, at most markets these days in the cocktail section. And so it's sweetened a little bit and it's a little bit bubbly. So if you're looking to do something alcohol free, it's a really, really nice option. Okay, I'm gonna stir that. I'm gonna wait to add the club soda until I put it in my glasses because I don't want too much club soda. I just want it to, to top, right? Doesn't apple cider make it too tart? Why apple cider? 
Someone's asking me why apple cider. People have smart questions today. Does apple cider make it too tart? I think it depends on the kind of apples that you're using, actually. Uh, my apple cider does not make it too tart. So if you're buying fresh cider somewhere and you're used to it being, uh, if somebody's made it for you and it's, I'm just trying to think of like a Granny Smith apple or something that's more of like an uh, apple pie apple, it might be a little bit tart, but these are not. So I'm gonna try this, Sunny, and see what I think. Mm, it's tart, but I like it. And you, my friend, I forgot to tell you, I have 21 Seeds Tequila in my house. You should go add some and make yourself a little cocktail. If you'd like, shall I share with you? Okay. <laughs> There's a box. There's a box of three of them. If you go straight back there, you can find them. Isn't that fun? What do you think? I want to get her opinion first. Oh, I love it. She loves it. It's not too tart? But, and I'm a tart person. Like, so, I, like lemons are my favorite. Right. She likes it because she likes lemons. <laughs> My yellow fingers, sorry. And I love the fizz. I like the fizz. I like the tart. I mean, it's still obviously sweet, but I just love the contrast there, right? And I could add more ice cubes certainly to it. What part of the country do you live in with such beautiful weather? Oh, I love this question. Let me clear these things out and get the herbs out for the charmula, and then I'll talk about where I live. And then also answer the question about my jeans. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm gonna turn off my little he oops hedgehog timer because I already know the answer to when this is gonna be done. I'm gonna check it. But let's get all of these beautiful ingredients out. And some that's already been made. It's so nice for it to not be uh, bee and wasp season around here. I live in Northern California, to answer your question. I live in the East Bay of San Francisco. And so it poured rain all week last week and was really cold. Luckily, the skies cleared and it's just been, it's been beautiful weather. It's a little cloudy right now, but uh, 50 degrees, 55, I don't know. It's been amazing. So it's actually perfect Traeger weather. And we should remind ourselves of this when we do Traeger Lives that I'm the house to come to in January, February, March. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, we've got all of our beautiful ingredients here for the sauce. And then let me just take a peek at the grill while we're doing this, okay? Did somebody really ask where my jeans were from? <laughs> J. Crew, she was joking. She punked me. I thought that was like 20 minutes ago. Okay, she did. I was like, yes, all my jeans are from J. Crew. <laughs> People do ask, who knows? Who knows? I'm gonna take some mint out as well and then get my blender. Let's see how everything's looking in here. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, these cakes look great. Normally I would probably stop and toss the vegetables a little bit so on the underside they could get browned evenly as well. Um, but I'm just gonna leave them so I don't keep opening and closing the grill so much, okay? Let's get the blender. I have a question. Yes, Sunny, how may I help you? What about the cookware? Where do you get the cookware from? Is this a serious question? <laughs> like, the, like the baking pans? You'd like to know where the sheet pans are from. I think we've lost our moderator on this side. She's in stitches. She's laughing so hard. She can't take it. I get my, <laughs> I get my sheet pans. They're made by USA Bakeware, which I love. They're on Instagram. I got these nonstick ones. They're called Gold Touch from Williams Sonoma. They're the best of the best. You certainly don't need to buy them with the nonstick, but they last so long and they clean up so nicely. So those are the sheets I use typically. I also have a ton of sheet pans that I've just gotten at a restaurant supply store, right? That are just metal and uh, not nonstick, but since I use parchment so much, you can bang them up, they're easy to clean up and I use them like crazy. So that's where I get my sheet pans. Good answer, Sunny? That's a great okay, terrific. Let me move up my blender. And we're going to get ready to make this amazing green sauce. I'm just going to move that a little bit so everyone can see it. And a spoon to taste. And my secret ingredient. We need my salt and pepper and my good luck Moroccan salt keeper that I got when I was in Morocco. Okay. And I've got my garlic. Okay, cool. And we're great on time. This is perfect. Okay, friends, this is the last part of this beautiful recipe I'm gonna make. And like I mentioned, it's called charmoula, which is a green sauce from typically found Morocco. I think kind of like North Africa in general. But all you use in this, I'm gonna use a little bit of garlic, olive oil, salt, pepper, 
herbs and my secret ingredient, which is a preserved lemon or part of a preserved lemon. All preserved lemons are, are lemons that have been packed in so much salt that it becomes a brine. And it kind of, <laughs> I say cooks through it, but it just softens the lemon up so you can use the entire thing in your cooking. And it's the rind that tastes so good and adds this just huge, beautiful pop of flavor to, for your dishes and is used very commonly in Moroccan cooking. So I'm just gonna get a knife for my garlic and we're gonna bring this together really quickly. Now I'm doing this in a blender today, but you could certainly do this by hand if you prefer. You'll see how many herbs I'm gonna chop. It's not a lot. Um, I love to hand chop things, but I know not everybody <laughs> likes to do that like I do. I don't know on the camera if you can see the green part of this garlic, but you wanna remove any green part in any allium you have. So if you're working with onions or garlic, the green is what tastes bitter, okay? So ditch that. I'm just gonna pop these in my blender carafe. Now one of the coolest things about these green sauces I love to do is that you can make them in advance as well and keep it in your fridge for up to a week at least. At least I do. And it's great. This recipe, all of these recipes of course are on Traeger.com and on the Traeger app. So if you go to the app and you enter either the name of the recipe or you enter my name, Believe it or not, I have over 70 recipes on Traeger.com that you can find. So all of this is on there, okay? Just rinse my hands again. No burning questions, Sunny. Okay, I'm just gonna keep on cooking until you tell me I have to stop. All right, so I've got my onion. I mean, I've got my garlic. I'm gonna put some salt in there. I'm gonna put a little bit of pepper. And then I don't know if you can see this, but the ingredients are actually under the blades of the blender. And so you need something to bring it up so you could actually cut that. So I'm gonna get some oil right now and pour some in there. And I'm gonna add the herbs. I think it calls for a half a cup of oil. So I'm gonna need a little bit more than that. Let's add a little more here. And <laughs> that's fun. Okay. When you add the herbs, yes. Any of your like chimichurri recipe or this recipe? Yeah. Do you take the leaves off of the stem? Or is there an easier way to accomplish it? Oh, somebody asked me if I take the stems off and just take the leaves off of the stems for my herbs when I use them for any of these sauces. And I'm going to answer your question as I use a couple different ones, okay? Um, I'm just squeezing my lemon juice directly in there. And what's your favorite? Oh, somebody asked me, what's my favorite midweek thing to cook in my Traeger? I tend to do things that cook really fast. So I'll do like a skirt steak uh, that cooks within eight to 10 minutes. I'll do salmon in 10 minutes. I'll do boneless, skinless chicken to add it to another recipe, right? But I also love roasting veggies on the Traeger and doing a protein to go with it really quickly. So those are kind of my favorites. We do everything on it. I'm not kidding, because this would be perfect because I could do everything I need to do before the dinner hour and then just come grill it, right? It becomes so easy. Okay. So I've got my lemon juice, my garlic, my olive oil, salt and pepper. Now all I need, I'm gonna add the preserved lemon after I blend it. So I just need, um, it calls for parsley and cilantro. Okay, do I wash my herbs? Yes, I usually wash my herbs. However, these are like triple washed. Cilantro could be very dirty sometimes. So I look always, if there's any dirt on it, of course I wash it. But both of these herbs, their stems taste great. So on their own, they taste a little bit different, right? But here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Boom, I just cut straight through them, kind of to where the leaves meet the stalks there and I use the stems, okay? No. Sunny just told me that was a game changer for her. I'm so happy that it was. That's terrific, okay? So <laughs> here's the difference. When you have a woodier stock on herbs, like mint, mint's kind of in between, but see how big that is? That doesn't taste good. So you wanna hand pick those leaves, Sunny, and everybody else. Uh, rosemary, another one. You just wanna pull against the direction in which the, um, the leaves grow and you pull against it and they come right off that stem for you. Same with thyme, right? So if it's a woodier, kind of harder stem, thicker stem, you don't wanna use it. But parsley and cilantro, go for it. 
Basil, I don't, I, I pick the leaves off more. Like if it's a thick stem, I usually kind of stay away from it. I'm putting mint in this because I'm feeling crazy. If you don't like cilantro, don't sweat it. You can absolutely not use it and use parsley, mint. Parsley on its own is delicious. It's just that cilantro is pretty typical in authentic Moroccan cooking. Okay, I think that's enough mint. Let's get this cleared off and give it a zap. See, because like by the time I do all of this, the blender is awesome, but you could have chopped it, <laughs> right? It doesn't take that long to chop it. Okay, I added some garlic. Okay, I'm gonna pop the lid on this. This is my, it's a juicer and a blender, which is pretty amazing. But obviously I'm using it like a blender right now. I'm not juicing my cilantro. I could try. And, okay, let's just give it a little. I'm doing it on a slow speed because it'll just start to take those uh, herbs down with it instead of just kind of throwing it everywhere, right? If you like it a little bit thicker, there's no rhyme or reason to this. You know, make it how you like it, okay? I'm gonna just scrape it down a little bit. What other proteins would work with this sauce? Somebody asked what other proteins work with this sauce. I'm not, I'm asking what wouldn't. I mean, it's honestly so good and so vibrant, <laughs> for lack of a better word, that it works with anything like, well, chicken, it's delicious. It works with really plain things too. So even if you don't spice or season your meat before you cook it, but I would do this with skirt steaks, Tani. I'd do it with shrimp or any white fish, it would be delicious. I put it on everything. We also put green sauces on our eggs, on our breakfast, on our roasted veggies. It's absolutely like, oh, tacos, so good on tacos. We love them. Okay, I'm tasting for flavor because you can always add salt, but you can't take it away. Mm. It's delicious. Okay, I'm gonna just give it one more little zap before I fold in the um, lemon and then we're gonna plate our meal. How does that sound? We can see if there are any last minute questions before I finish. I do, I have had so much fun doing this today because it's a great time of year for me to be doing it since I'm all about uh, healthier ways to cook into the new year. But I'm super excited for who's coming next on Traeger Live. I don't know if you guys can guess it because it's February 10th, drum roll please, for the Super Bowl. It's Chad Ward, uh, Whiskey Bent Barbecue, who of course is the perfect person. I think that he might be doing something with Dan Patrick to get ready for the Super Bowl. Uh, if you participate in any of our game day competitions, they are so much fun. I had so much fun messing around this fall with college football. So uh, we're going to bring back the best of for the Super Bowl, and Chad is going to take you through it. So he'll be right here on Thursday, February 10th, which I think he said might be his birthday. If that's the case, it's going to be that much more fun. Okay. We have another question. I'm going to add that preserved lemon, okay? You only need about a tablespoon. I'm going to tie a bite first. Ooh, that's got some kick to it because there are some chilies in with this brand I bought. <laughs> Do I always use fresh herbs or can you use dried herbs to make these sauces? Sunny, they're typically made with fresh herbs. I'm trying to think of any of the dried ones I would put in to maybe enhance the flavor. Like I think oregano tastes pretty similar when it's dried, but for the others, it really does alter the flavor quite a bit. So I'd stick to fresh herbs if you can on this one. Oh, someone's asking about minced garlic in a jar versus fresh garlic. Absolutely, you can use it. I tend to not buy it because they sell so much. I don't need that much and it doesn't, I usually don't go through it in time, right? Like I don't want it sitting in my fridge forever. So yeah, I tend to use fresh. Bye Charlie, I'll see you at your basketball game. <laughs> We're busy around here today. I prefer fresh, but if you buy minced in bulk and you go through it quickly, good for you, okay? All right, I think we should plate this up. What do you think, Sunny? Okay. All right. I'm going to look at the finished product over here. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at those cakes. Can you see them? 
They're not quite done. They need to be a little drier looking on the top because when you put a toothpick in them, they're gonna be fudgy in the center, which is amazing, but you want the top to look kind of baked through, right? And these are still a little bit shiny. So I'm gonna use the bigger one I had to show you the finished product. And let's plate this whole meal up for you, okay? All right. I'm just gonna get all of the serve where we need at once so we can enjoy it. Pardon me? Plates. Plates? Cool. Thank you. <laughs> can you tell it's like having a family member here with Sunny running the show here for me? Okay, what else do I need? Oh, I need this beautiful sauce and some berries. One thing to know about the dessert is that I made some raspberry sauce in advance and I'll show you how I did that. It's funny because I didn't follow my recipe. I just did what I would normally do. And then I read the recipe and it's exactly what I did. So first of all, I ate some of the cake last night. <laughs> Sorry, but it's so delicious. And so I'm gonna cut one and make it look really pretty on its plate. And then we're gonna pretend that you can't see that, okay? Somebody's asking what my favorite dairy-free dessert is. I'm gonna cut that scrap piece away because that's not cute. Uh, what is my favorite dairy-free dessert? Gosh, what don't I like? I mean, I eat a lot of lemon desserts. I love lemon, um, but I'm trying to think like lemon meringue or lemon curd has dairy in it. It's a good question, Sonny. It's not this, cause it's got a stick and a half of butter in it. <laughs> Oh gosh, my favorite winter recipe. Ooh, I'm doing my kale and cauliflower soup this weekend, which is so good. Watch, I'm gonna take this raspberry sauce with a little bit of lemon juice and sugar that I um, put in a blender. And then I just strained the seeds out of it after I did that. I'm gonna put it underneath the chocolate so that you get a little bit of it with every bite. Ooh la la. Can you tell I love my job? <laughs> Uh, my favorite winter. So I love soups. I have a winter minestrone with, I think, turkey meatballs or chicken. Winter minestrone with chicken on the trigger site. That's delicious. I have to share a cute story, though, because I was doing a podcast recording the other day with some women who I adore. And we were supposed to be talking about health and wellness. And all they wanted to hear about was what it's like to work with Traeger. <laughs> so they're like, oh, what's it like? And I said, it's as fun as you'd imagine because I get to cook my kind of food and they just let me do whatever I want. It's an absolute blast. So I thought it was so great that they, they were so in love with Traeger. It was what fun. Brand what brand of blender? I use a Breville, which I love. I'm kind of obsessed with Breville products. And full disclosure, I work with them a lot. So the one I was using today is Breville. I love them for their food processor and their... Um, convection toaster oven. I love my Vitamix, of course. Vitamix is aw are awesome. Okay, I went heavy on the fruit for that, you guys, because it's New Year. Same us, but a better version of us, right? Woo, this is gonna be so good. How did you get started cooking? Somebody wants to know how I got started cooking. I was born to eat. <laughs> That's how I got started, and I realized that when I went to college, and even in high school, I, somebody needed to do the cooking, so I became the cook for my roommates, and the rest is kind of history. I always knew I wanted to go to cooking school, but I didn't build up the courage until I'd worked for a while. And I went right when I was 29 before I turned 30 and have been working in the business ever since. Let me get the other ingredients and we are ready to plate this dinner and enjoy it, okay? By the magic of television, my friends, or video, camera, whatever we want to say. Ta-da, here's some other chicken I made. We're gonna grab this charmoula. Let's plate it up. Um, somebody asked what my favorite thing is to make on the Traeger. Oh, it's so hard to say. I was joking on this podcast the other day that I'm going to, um, people are going to know me for my roasted cauliflower, curry roasted cauliflower That's with a, <laughs> with the chimichurri sauce because I made it at a Traeger function when it was hundreds of us and all of the best pit masters and barbecue people were there. So as they were making like dinosaur rib crazy things and brisket and all this delicious stuff. I made cauliflower with chimichurri and everyone was like, this is delicious. <laughs> and so that's kind of what I'm known for, but I'm a huge fan of grilling meats as well, believe it or not. Um, skirt steak, 
Uh, I love to do, I do a lot of quicker cook things. I also love doing like a slow cooked pork shoulder with citrus juices. Um, you name it, I'll cook it on here. I like showing people that you can do all kinds of things on here. Kind of like the chocolate dessert, right? Ooh, what's the secret to making it look good on a plate? I gotta be honest, I don't think it's my strength, but I'll show you a couple tricks that even I can do. I just keep washing my hands here. And I think we're like right in an hour, so the timing's kind of amazing. Sunny, I think that what makes it look the best when you're plating is to keep it simple, right? You usually wanna do things in threes or odd numbers, which <laughs> I'm just realizing I did not do here. Um, but it helps a ton. It's just how our eyes see things visually. We see in threes and fives. It's the, what's that called? Is that the Fibonacci sequence? What is that in nature when things are in odd numbers like that? Um, so I try to keep it really simple and I'll do a couple ingredients like this. The more food on the plate, typically, um, the more we wanna eat, right? Like if you, if you take a smaller plate and make it full, it's much more appealing than having a big plate with nothing on it. But then some of the best chefs know how to plate foods where they're putting a super tiny piece of something on it and it's absolutely stunning. Um, I'm just not that good at it. But this, you see, like I just pick a really simple plate. I don't like brightly colored plates. I like white or beige or something that's like barely like this because you just want the food to pop, right? And then color and grouping things like this simply. I just don't, I don't fuss with it very much, right? So I wanna show this to you all together. Ooh, one more sip of this. And remind you, of course, to join us again right back here for our 61st episode on February 10th with Chad Ward on a Thursday before the Super Bowl. And for all of these recipes and so much more, of course, you can go to the Traeger app or visit us at traeger.com slash recipes. And again, was using the Ironwood 885, my, the love of my life, <laughs> to make all of this, and the hickory and the apple pellets. So for all of this, just remember you can go to traeger.com. I wanna thank all of you for spending, your, spending an hour with me today and welcoming us back in this new year. And here's to you and to your health. I'm gonna dig in. I don't know about you, Sunny, but let's do it. All right. Cheers, everybody. I'm going for it. I'm just gonna steal a little bite. <laughs> Nobody needs to know, right, that it is, uh, I'm just using this as my serving portion. <laughs> mm. I think I just got it on my face, but it's absolutely delicious. I did. 